four particles, A, B, C, and D. It is question four, and there are four particles. How exciting is that? How do we do? Oh, no, we've got... Anyway, four particles are on the same straight line on a smooth horizontal table. A is speed six, and is moving towards B. Oh, it's going to crash. The speed of B is two, and is moving towards A. The particle C is moving with speed five away from B, and D, and towards D, which is stationary. C diagram. Glad they gave us a diagram. The first collision is between A and B, which have masses of 0.8 and 0.2 respectively. After the particles collide, A has speed 4 in its original direction of motion. Calculate the speed of B after the collision. These questions are all about choosing your positive direction and sticking consistently to the same thing. And the, the place where people went wrong with this was all about mixing up what was positive and negative and, and getting confused about that. So, let's start with this first collision. We have the particles A and B. I am going to take that as being my positive direction. That seems to make sense, doesn't it? So we've got, we've got the particles. Uh, A has mass. It must be given somewhere. 0.8. B has mass 0.2. So before... We've got A with 6 in that direction and B with 2 metres per second in that direction. And afterwards, we are told that particle A has speed 4 in its original direction. Calculate the speed of B after the collision. Well, actually, just a little bit of logic and thinking, you know, and picturing in our mind how things collide tells us that the direction of B has to be that direction, doesn't it? Because, you know, otherwise it would have bounced over A and, and that's not going to have happened. So there is our uh, final velocity of B. So let's work this out. We're using conservation of momentum calculations. And we're saying the total momentum before, that is 0.8 times 6 plus 0.2 times minus 2 is equal to the total momentum after. That is 0.8 times 4 plus 0.2 times v. And so there is my equation. No issues with any signs there. It's just uh, sorted out, ready to go. That gave me, well, that left-hand side is 4.4. The right-hand side is 3.2 plus 0.2 times this velocity of v. So the velocity of v afterwards, if I rearrange that, is exactly 6 meters per second. Good start. Okay, we've got six out of that. Um, we're then thinking what happens next. The second collision is between C and D, which have masses 0.3 and 0.1. The particles coalesce when they collide. Coalesce means they join together, merge, become one particle. Find the speed of the combined particle. They've even, uh, they've even told us what coalesce means, really, haven't they? Because they've told us the coalesce, and then we get a combined particle after this collision. Right, so we're doing the same thing. We're setting up the same diagram. We have the particles before and after. Again, we've got 0.3 and 0.1. Is that right? As their masses. We've got 5 as the initial speed of that one. And that one is at rest initially. And then afterwards, we have one new particle where they join together of mass 0.4 and we want to find its velocity. So the same, pretty much the same calculation, conservation of momentum, we've got 0.35s plus 0 is equal to 0.4 times v, which gives us 1.5 is 0.4 v so this time, the velocity afterwards is 3.75 metres per second. There we go. So, we've now got A moving with velocity 4, B moving with velocity 6, and the combined C and D particle with velocity 3.75. The third collision is between B and the combined particle after which no further collisions occur. Calculate the greatest possible speed of the combined particle after 
the third collision. Okay, so uh, we need to set up what goes on here. There's a little sentence that's just kind of thrown in there that, that feels it doesn't feel necessarily that relevant, but actually, that well, we're going to see that's quite an important little phrase for the for them to have put in here, because that that matters in terms of what is now going to happen. Right. So we're going to do our diagram. We're, we're good at drawing these diagrams. We've always got space to draw them. It's important that we draw these. We've got particle B with mass 0.2 and a velocity 6. We've got the combined CD particle with mass of 0.4 and a velocity of 3.75. Clearly, uh, those two are going to meet. And we need to know, what do we need to know? The greatest possible speed of the combined particle after the collision. So, so that's u and that's v. So we, they both would have velocity afterwards. u and v. And we want to find the greatest possible value of this v. Is that right? Yes, the greatest possible speed of the combined particle. Right. Okay. Our conservation of momentum calculation has uh, 0.2 times 6 plus 0.4 times 3.75 is 0.2 times u plus 0.4 times v. <coughs> Which gives me 2.7, that combines to give 2.7, is 0.2u plus 0.4v. Now, now this is all very well, but I, I'm supposed to be finding v, that's the one I'm interested in, and I've still got this figure u involved in this. Do I know anything about the value of u? Well, well, yeah, we just talked about what is happening here. These two particles coalesce and keep moving. A is scooting along here with velocity 6. Uh, B is with velocity 6. A has velocity 4. Now, we're told that no further collisions occur. A is going to continue with velocity 4. If the velocity of B after this second collision is less than 4, A would eventually collide with it, wouldn't it? Okay, so we do know something about the speed of B after the collision. The speed of B, U must be greater than or equal to 4. Otherwise, A would collide again. Okay, so u must be greater than or equal to 4. Now, if we think about how that relates to this expression here, if we rearrange this, we're left with 0.4v is 2.7 minus 0.2u. We want the greatest possible value of v. Now, the bigger u is, the more we're taking away from 2.7, the smaller v would be. So we want u to be as small as it could possibly be. But it has to be bigger than 4. Does that, do you see what we're doing with this now? So if u has to be greater than or equal to 4, and we want it as small as possible, if u equals 4, v would be the maximum value. So 0.4v is 2.7 minus 0.2 times 4. And that, rearranged, gives us V as being 4.75 metres per second as our final velocity. And that's maths. <laughs>